गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन मैं सल गौतम शर्मा आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन बिहाफ ऑफ सेपियंस एजुकेशन सो फॉर मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ आवर इंस्टीट्यूट प्लीज विजिट आवर वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट सेपियंस एजुकेशन डॉट कॉम सो टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द बर्नोलिस इक्वेशन एट ऑल ओके वट इज बर्नोलिस इक्वेशन सो देर आर टू टॉपिक्स आई विल कवर साइड बाई साइड ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट ऑफ द टॉपिक विच इज योर इक्वेशन ऑफ कंटिन्यूटी एंड सेकेंड इज Second is your Bernoulli's theorem, right? Second is your Bernoulli's theorem. So how we, uh, how this Bernoulli's theorem is been derived? So I will discuss each and everything this case um, uh, step by step. So before uh, deriving the Bernoulli's equation, you need to understand what is the equation of continuity. Okay? Now, what is the equation of continuity? So this is a very important uh, topic. Uh, the this equation of is the mathematical expression of the law of conservation of mass in a fluid dynamics conservation it means that whenever mass mass cannot be created nor be destroyed it means that whenever we are putting a mass suppose this is your pipe okay suppose i think um, its cur cursor is visible okay cursor is visible mm. suppose let us consider this is a pipe right there is a green color so when we put a mass when we uh, when a mass will flow for suppose example 10 meter per uh, 10 kg per second so definitely mass out mass will come out as a 10 kg per second okay got it so it means that it if mass in uh, uh, mass is going inside per second is not coming outside suppose mass is going 10 meter per second and uh, mass is coming out 9 meter per second so where this mass 1 kg 1 1 kg 1 uh, kg per uh, per second will be there where it will it will definitely accumulate at the pipe and pipe will burst okay so as per this equation what happen whatever my mass flowing mass flow rate uh, going inside or uh, going inlet is equal to mass flow rate outside okay so in a steady flow mass of the fluid entering into the tube of in a particular time interval is equal to the mass of the fluid leaving the tube so whatever mass is entering should be equal to mass uh, mass leaving right it will be equal to mass of the leaving so mass is equal to volume into density you know this um, formula mass is equal to volume into density or we can say that mass per unit volume is equal to density so mass can be written as dense volume into density right i hope you have understood this so the basic thing is that whatever mass is entering at a particular interval for example for 10 second or 1 second mass is 1 kg entering so mass 1 kg will out uh, coming uh, it should must come out 1 kg at the outlet or if 5 kg of mass is entering at per second rate then at outlet this uh, mass should come out as a 5 5 kg per second okay now you have understood now that uh, mass is equal to velocity into density uh, sorry volume into density so can we write volume as a area into area into length covered can we write this see let us consider let let us consider Let's let us consider. See here, mass flow rate is your at inlet is your m1 dot and mass flow rate at outlet is m2. Now the area of cross section of the pipe is a1. At at the same time, if a small distance is covered when mass is flowing inside this, so the let the small distance covered is delta, uh, delta uh, x1. So can we write here in place of volume? Can we write here area into del x? at inlet so mass at inlet is equal to volume into density so volume is equal to area a1 into del, uh, change in length or length uh, length uh, at which the mass is traveling is del x1 into density into density now i am one thing i want to clear make you clear that this is a v1 thing v1 is your velocity don't consider this as a volume right volume is different thing velocity is different thing right okay now tell me at the same time mass is coming outside that is m2 is equal to a2 into x2 into density del2 may be that a density may change here density may be different here density may be different i will come uh, come to it later i hope you have understood now 
mass floor uh, mass entering at inlet is equal to area a1 into delta uh, x1 into uh, density del1 uh, density del1 and mass 2 is equal to a2 into x2 into rho2 rho2 right so rho2 is the density at the outlet now can we divide both the equation just previous equation whatever we have we have derived here whatever we have written so can we can we rewrite this equation and rewrite this equation in the form by just dividing it time so what i have done actually i have divided just it by time t delta t and as you know that why i have equal because why i have done equal why i am uh, doing equal to we are doing equal to because we have assumed that uh, mass entering is equal to mass out coming out okay mass coming is entering at inlet section is equal to mass is going outside of the pipe so mass is here a1 into delta x1 into rho1 which is equal to a2 into delta x2 into rho2 can we divide both the equation by delta t so if i will this uh, divide it by delta t so what will happen so see here delta x1 by delta t is equal to velocity v1 yes now at the same interval of time delta x2 at by delta is equal to velocity v2 so see here velocity v1 v1 is your velocity at inlet and v2 is your velocity at outlet velocity at outlet right velocity at outlet outlet i hope you have understood now now can we write here a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 why because density delta 1 Uh, sorry, uh, row one and row two, this both are equal. So, can we cut this? Because we assume that there is no change in the density. Same liquid, for example, water is entering, right? So, if water is entering, its density is not changing from one place to another. So, if you cut this, then we will get a one into v one is equal to a two into v two, where v one and v two are the velocity. Don't confuse that v one and v two are the volume. So, we have come to the conclusion about v one and v two. is your velocity of the fluid at inlet and outlet so if at inlet is a1 v1 and outlet is a2 v3 suppose there is another section where there is third section third section of the pipe you are considering and there is a a3 v3 so see here so it means that area into velocity is constant so this av is constant and this is known as continuity equation okay this is known as the equation of continuity i hope you have understood this equation of continuity right right now as you have understood that av is constant can we write here a is inversely proportional to velocity so it means that if there is a pipe right and this is your area and this is your velocity now if pipe pipe's area of cross section will reduce so velocity will increase why because area and velocity are inversely proportional that's why we have written a ab is constant if ab is constant it means that a is equal to constant by b it means that area is inversely proportional to velocity so if velocity will increase area will decrease if velocity will decrease area will increase so this is how it is behaving right so i hope you have understood now av is constant this is known as continuity equation so any pipe flow if mass uh, any pipe flow area is there velocity is there so product of area and velocity will be same at any anywhere either you are taking at a point 1 point 2 point 3 point 4 wherever you will take a point so you will able to understand that a product of area and velocity will be constant got it now this is what uh, all about uh, all about uh, this right now now i hope you have understood the concept of the uh, continuity uh, continuity equation that is area in product of area and velocity will remain same either pipe pipe's dimension is less pipe's dimensions are more okay now the most important theorem is your bernoulli's theorem and its principle okay so let us discuss one by one what is your bernoulli theorem so according to this theorem total energy right according to this theorem total energy that is pressure energy how many types of energy we are having that is pressure energy because fluid is flowing with a pressure and another type of energy is your potential energy because when water is at a height h 
so it has some potential energy when it is changing its height so it has different potential energy right so the potential energy pressure energy and kinetic energy why i am talking about kinetic energy because kinetic energy has a, a, um, its own role because fluid is flowing with the velocity v if fluid is flowing with the velocity v then it has kinetic energy right so how many types of energy you have got pressure energy potential energy due to height change pressure due to the force as well as area and kinetic energy as because fluid is in a motion so according to this theorem pressure energy potential energy and kinetic energy per unit volume or per ma unit mass of an incompressible what is uh, what they are telling incompressible means to say that liquid must not compress or fluid must not be compressed non viscous means viscosity they don't have a viscous property fluid in a steady flow through the pipe remain constant throughout the flow if the liquid is non viscous if the liquid is incompressible then pressure energy potential energy as well as kinetic energy the sum of all three energy will remain constant it is also known as conservation of energy at all right so by according to this theorem pressure energy potential energy and kinetic energy in any flow um, per unit uh, mass in any flow which is incompressible again you need to add this it fluid must be incompressible fluid must be non viscous fluid is in steady flow why i am talking about steady earlier class or earlier part in a video i have talked about steady flow that is a uh, flow flow is not changing its um, flow any flow is not changing its behavior through a pi remain constant throughout the flow okay i hope i i am able to explain it the bernoulli's theorem properly right so this is all about bernoulli's theorem so let us see the diagram what uh, diagram indicates there is a pipe and where area of cross section at inlet is your a1 and area of cross section at outlet is a2 pressure at inlet is your p1 and pressure at outlet is p2 now can we tell that what is the force so force is equal to pressure into area so force at inlet is equal to p1 into a1 and force at outlet is equal to p2 into a2 can we write this yes we can write it now suppose there is a liquid which is at a height of y1 and here when it goes in at this outlet side so its height become y2 okay so this thing you need to understand now now let us uh, go step by step now say, tell me now pressure energy is what pressure into volume we are talking about energy not pressure pressure energy so when we multiply pressure into volume so you will get pressure energy got it you will get pressure energy so what is pressure p volume is your mass by density so it means that pressure pm by density is your pressure energy now if i talk about kinetic energy if i talk about kinetic energy if a fluid has a mass m and velocity v so kinetic energy is equal to half mv square and if we talk about potential energy so how we can calculate potential energy just by mgh what is mgh mass of the fluid g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the height height from any reference point suppose we are taking any reference point here here we are taking a reference point so let it be a height of h1 let it be a height of h2 likewise right so these are the potential energy pressure energy and kinetic energy so how we can define the potential energy the uh, sorry pressure energy pressure energy is your pressure into mass by density kinetic energy is your half mv square half mv square and potential energy is your mgh okay so this is what all about now uh, let us consider this v if i am talking about capital v so this is your volume and if i am talking about small v so this is your velocity so don't be confused about these things right if i am writing like this see here in kinetic energy case i am using small velocity v it means that it is your velocity right so try to understand this and differentiate and if i am talking about capital v so that is your volume i hope you have understood these things very clearly okay now let us go a uh, one step ahead now let us consider from the diagram inlet point is p1 yeah see here inlet point uh, when we talk about a diagram um, 
see here uh, this is your inlet point so inlet is your this and outlet so this is your inlet section inlet section and this is your outlet section this is your outlet section right so at inlet we are considering as a point 1 and at outlet we are considering it uh, as a point 2 now energy at inlet if i am talking about pressure energy so just now we have derived pressure energy as pm by density kinetic energy is half mg square and uh, potential energy is mgh now energy at inlet that is equal to pressure energy is equal to p1 m1 by rho1 just now we have discussed about pressure energy so at inlet section it is your p1 m1 by rho1 now kinetic energy is, is equal to half into m1 into v1 velocity square and if I am talking about potential energy, so this is your m1 into g into y1. Why I am taking y1? Because this uh, inlet is at a height of y1 from the ground. See here, an inlet, inlet section is at a height of y1 only. An outlet is at a height of y2. So potential energy is mgh height. So m1 g into y1. Now, if you total add on pressure energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy at an inlet, so what you will get? P1 M1 by rho1 plus half M1 B. Uh, this is a small b. So B1 square plus M1 G into Y1. So this is all about total energy at inlet. Now I will talk about total energy at outlet. Now let us see here. <coughs> now total energy at outlet. A, sorry, why I have written it inlet? So it should be, uh, please correct it. It is your uh, not uh, inlet, it is your outlet. Okay, it is your outlet. I hope you have understood. This is your outlet. Outlet. So, outlet, right? So, energy at an outlet is equal to pressure energy P2 M2 by rho 2. Kinetic energy is equal to half M2 V2 square and potential energy is equal to M2 G into Y2. So this is as so simple as this. So if we talk about if we talk about total energy at outlet, so this is your P2, uh, P2, M2 by rho2 plus half M2 V2 square plus half, uh, M2 G into Y2. So this is I think this is okay at all. Now tell me as just we have studied that a Bernoulli's theorem to, uh, total energy per unit volume or mass will remain constant. That is energy by mass at inlet is equal to outlet, right? So can we do, we have got outlet energy, we have got inlet energy. So can we divide energy by mass at inlet as well as outlet so that we will get both the equation equal? So what we have done, what I have done, see here. So I have done what? Just divided. Now we can uh, write energy by mass. Energy by mass. Now, if you are talking about inlet point, so we have already come to the this equation that inlet has an energy. This is your P1 M1 by rho1 and divided by mass. Why? Because we are talking about energy per unit mass. Half M1 V1 square divided by again mass plus half uh, Mg into Y1 divided by mass M1. Okay. Now again similarly. At outlet, if I will talk about outlet, so outlet has equation P2 M2 by rho2 divided by mass because mass is our, at outlet mass is your M2, M2 is your outlet mass, right? Outlet mass. And why I am dividing it because Bernoulli's theorem total energy per unit mass we are talking about. Okay, so it means that energy should be divided by mass. Then only we can say that both the equation are correct, uh, equal. So just divide it similarly. We have divided here half m2 v2 square by m2 plus m2 into g to y2 divided by two. Just cut it. So when you will cut this, when you will cut this, so what do you will get? So try to find. So you are getting p1 by rho1. Very very interesting. Half v1 square g y1 is equal to p2 rho2 v2 square by 2 g y2. As rho 1 is equal to rho 2, so can we write here P1 P1 by rho minus P2 by rho, just subtract it, see, plus half V1 square by V2 square plus G into Y1 Y2 is equal to 0. 
so from this equation we can write that there is no change in change in pressure energy per unit mass change in kinetic energy per unit mass and change in um, um gravitational energy or potential energy per unit mass is equal to zero it means that there is no change at all if you are getting it is as a zero it means that you are not getting any change so can we write here that pressure energy per unit mass that is p by rho plus v to square by 2 plus g h is equal to constant because there is no change at all why because we have got equation like change change uh, change uh, is a uh, change in energy and that it is your kinetic energy pressure energy and potential energy is zero if there is no change so we can write that all the energies are constant so can we write here pressure energy plus um, um, kinetic energy plus uh, potential energy is constant and through all the flow and it is applicable at any height at all right so this is what we have got is so this equation particularly pressure by rho plus v square by 2 plus g s is is constant and this is known as bernoulli's equation okay now if we talk about this particular point p by rho and if you divide it by g if you divide it by g see here we should divide it by g so what we we are getting p by rho g v square by 2g plus h okay since your h is your height that is in a meter so this should also be meter and this should also be meter why i am talking about this is meter because meter should be added with the meter only we can't add meter with the liter meter with the any other uh, thing you it is known as the equation of homogeneity okay so if h is the height so uh, can we tell that this is your pressure head that is pressure height that is pressure height and if it is uh, appeared as a velocity so can we write here velocity height and h is your gravitational head so um, three thing you have got that is your pressure head and pressure head so if you want pressure head so it is your p rho by uh, rho g and if you want a velocity head so how you will write velocity head as v square by 2g and gravitational head is your h got it so i hope you have understood the bernoulli's theorem okay it is very much uh, important theorem and it has lots of application so i'll discuss in next video so before that you should uh, de uh, derive it uh, write it properly memorize it so that it will be better for you right so i hope you, it is uh, more than enough for today's class please uh, subscribe our channel for continu continuously other parts of the video to see the other parts of video right thank you